All right. So, we'll read our scripture. We're, we're in a series, right? Defining salvation, part... <laughs> part nine. 25,000. <laughs> part nine. It doesn't, there's been several points in every part, so that has nothing to do with it. This is part nine. We'll finish someday. Maybe not. Maybe Jesus will come back before we're done with this. But Wow, that would be, that would be cool. That'd be cool. So our scripture has been Hebrews 2. Hebrews the coffee, right? <laughs> nice laugh over there. Hebrews 2, 1 through 4, we've been reading, right? Remember this, right? This is nine weeks, we should remember. Therefore, we must pay cl much closer attention to what we have heard, lest we drift away from it. For since the message declared by angels proved to be reliable, and every transgression or disobedience received a just retribution, how shall we escape if we neglect such a great salvation? It was declared by, at first by the Lord. It was attested to us by those who heard, while God also bore witness by signs and wonders and various miracles and by gifts of the Holy Spirit distributed according to his will. So we're talking about salvation, not neglecting salvation. He gives a little description right there, which is really cool how, you know, it was declared at first by the Lord, tested to us by those who heard. Uh, but they, he's talking about preaching the gospel of salvation. And uh, we don't want to drift away from that, right? Or neglect our salvation, and that's why we're defining salvation, so we know what we actually have in Christ. Oh, I gave one away right there. Ooh, I gave one away. Someone has a one. Someone has an answer right there. So our verb form of of, of saved is in the Greek. Sozo. Sozo. Our noun form is. Soteria, yes, right, right. Salvation. Soteria translated as salvation. Sozo usually translated to heal, to save, to make whole. And so it's a really interesting word because often it's just translated, um, well, we don't even know it's the word sozo right there. A lot of times because it's not, of course, we're reading the English, right? So if it says, uh, your faith has made you whole, it usually mean it says in the Greek, their faith has made you sozo. And then also, um, you are saved as to save uh, with the same word in the Greek. So anyhow, that's very, very important to know as we define salvation because uh, as the uh, definition we've been reading, I'll just read a part of it, but to make one whole in spirit, soul, and body is part of all part of salvation. So, We've been discussing or looking at all the things that happen to us when we're saved. And so now we're going to go back over all those points. And I know you're just looking forward to getting a York peppermint patty. But no, this is mine. Sorry. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to call on Peyton first. Justified was one of them. Yes. Let me look at my... My notes here are kind of keep track of it. Griffin. New creation. New creation is one right there. Judah. Forgiven. Good. Brad. Under grace, not under law. Gavin. Yes, Jesus is the cornerstone. Well, it, I, I word it a little different, but that's the, yeah, that's built on the foundation or the cornerstone of Jesus, but that, that's good, yeah. yeah. Abby. Child of God, I'll accept that. <laughs> Daniel. Translated out of the kingdom of darkness, right. Sarah. 
blessed. Peyton. Sanctified. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, I was thinking about it that we were, I was thinking I said it differently, but I, did I say it just like that? Okay. Page. Oh, you're the first. What? Usually you're first. Oh, okay, okay. A gift to Jesus. That was last week, right? Wait, did I? Oh, yeah, I got on there. Yep. All right. Reconciled. Gavin. Redeemed. We didn't cover that yet, did we? That was your next one? Sarah. What? Did we... Oh, yeah, we didn't cover that one, right? We did translate it out of Domain of Darkness, yeah. And transfer the kingdom of his dear son. Made royalty. Priesthood, yes. Abby. What? Righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Yeah, we became the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Abby. Circumcised in Christ, which is your heart. You, you know, we should probably change that to we were given a heart of flesh. How about that? Given a heart of flesh. That sounds better, doesn't it? I don't have to explain all that again. <laughs> you got another one? Brought near, yeah, 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 made near to God through the blood, yes. Uh -huh. Child of God, yes. What? Who said child of God already? Who said child? They did? Oh. Abby. That's the name of the series. That's not an answer. We already did. Paige did Circumcising Christ. Yes, she did. Did that. What? She said that. We did that, right? We did that, did that, did that, did that, did that. Wait, have we done them all? Oh, not that one. You said it? Oh, what'd you say? No, what'd you just say? No. Oh, we're missing that one, right? Ah! <laughs> Well, that is what he said then. Well, I was waiting for you to say it again. In Christ. We, we go in, in Christ when we're saved. I think that's it. I'm looking at everyone now. And which one? Oh, that's, that was yours, which is also justified. It's just like a synonym for justified. No, it isn't. It's a separate word. We were paid for. That's the redemption part. <laughs> Does you have another one? We did that. There is no more. We did them all. We did that one. Who said forgiven already? She just said it. No, we did them all. I'm pretty sure. We got, they're all done. Yeah. That's 18 points. Yep. 18 we've covered. Wow. That like your yeah, that's just one Sunday right there. I could have done them all on one Sunday, but, but you know, wait a second, wait a second, where am I? Oh, here it is, here it is. All right, you ready for a new point? Look at Ephesians 2, 18. Wait, I gotta eat my York. Oh yeah. No. York's the best. Oh yeah, York's are the best. Mm. Hey, I was just I'm a garbage disposal. Ephesians two eighteen. Mm. 
Ephesians 2.18. Page 568, right? Okay. All right. Four. Through him, who's him? Jesus, the Christ, the Son of the living God. Yeah, you think it would be. Yeah. Yeah, but some translations don't capitalize. Oh, it doesn't capitalize. Okay. Yeah. Through him, through Jesus, we both have access in one spirit to the Father. So our next point is we were given access to the Father or to God when we were saved. Given access to God. Right, we don't, you don't have access to a lot of high people on this earth, right? Right? I mean, a big name, somebody, you don't know, you probably, none of you have access to some big name person. Really? But think about it. You have access to God. Even if you don't have access to any big name person on the earth, you have access to God when you're saved. So Jews and Gentiles right now have access. Right Before Christ, who had access? The Jews had access to God. They were in covenant, right? They were in the old covenant. They were in covenant with God. But they, they had to go through the priest still. Or the prophet would, would hear from God and speak to the people. So they didn't, they didn't have access like we had it. Uh, the prophets had certain access. The priests had certain access. But, but only, right, only Israel had access to God through the covenant that was made with them by God. And they, you know, they go into the Holy of Holies, right? The priest every year would go in the Holy of Holies and present the blood on the mercy seat and the people would be forgiven. But they had access to God. But now, of course, because of Jesus, we have access 24 hours a day, seven days a week. We have access to God. An open door, right, to the throne room of God. You got an open door to the throne room, the office of God. That's pretty good news, right? We don't have to wait for anybody to open up the door as, as they did in the old covenant, right? They had to wait. They'd, they'd call the prophet, prophet, speak. <laughs> I want to hear from the prophet, right? They had to wait for someone to open the door to hear from God. We don't. Who? We don't have to have a priest to go to God for us. Why? Because we are priests. You just said earlier. Made royalty and a priest. Priesthood unto God. We are priests. Come on. We don't have to get cleansed. Remember the, 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 the high priest had to get all cleansed before he went into the Holy of Holies? He had to get all just done right, right? He had to have perfect clothes on. Everything had to be perfect before he went into the Holy of Holies. But now we don't have to get cleansed because we are cleansed Amen. through the blood, Hallelujah. the blood of Jesus, through the blood. Huh? We did talk about the blood. <laughs> didn't talk about it enough. Well, that's true. That's true. But this, come on, this is some, uh, some major information, right? Everybody should know this. Why? Because this information changes everything. It changes everything for all of humanity forever. Right? Come on. This should be on the front page of the newspaper every day. Every day, right? Every day it should be on the front page. You now you have access to God. You, you have access to the the creator of all things. Come on. It could be on the page, on the front page every day. You can talk to God today. God wants you to talk to him today. That's some good news. We have access into God's throne room. 
You know, and understanding just that one truth, whoo, that'll make you want to shout a little bit, right? Make you want to dance a little bit. <laughs> make you want to run around the church, take a few laps. Come on, that you got access to God. The office door of God is wide open for anybody who is sozoed. <laughs> Why? Why is that? Because we're washed, we're cleansed, we're clean through the blood of Jesus, and we're welcome into God's throne room. Amen. We're welcome into his office. Hallelujah. You want another point tonight? Yes, please. Yes, please. Yes, please. That was a quick one. It was a quick one. Huh? That was 19. Yeah, here comes 20. Ephesians 1, 19. Go backwards a little bit there, right? Oh, it is? Okay. Same page. Just, as that's tiny, tiny print, that, that ESV that you got there. Ephesians 1.19. This is in, in Paul's prayer he was praying. And we're going to read this in the ESV. Then I'm going to read it in the uh, Weymouth translation, which he was a Greek scholar. He wrote uh, his own translation. But I'm going to read that for a reason. So we'll get the, the first part here, ESV. And what is the immeasurable greatness of his power toward us who believe? According to the working of his great might. Okay, that was in the ESV, right? That you just have right there. In the Weymouth translation, it says, And what the transcendent greatness of his power in us, believers, as seen in the working of his infinite might. Now, there's a lot of words in there, right? That first word, power, is dunamis. We've talked about dunamis. And then this next word is very interesting, and that's why I like the Weymouth translation better. Instead of toward us, it's the word in the Greek is actually ice, spelled E-I-S in the Greek, or Greek transliteration. And it means it can be translated toward, but it's most often translated as in. Or into, into, his power into us believers. So that puts a whole different take on it, right? When he translated his power in us, ice, <laughs> ice believers, in us believers. As seen in the working of his infinite might, and that is a word we've talked about before too, kratos. That's in this verse. All of those are in this verse. But my point being there, when we were saved, or our new point tonight, when we were saved, God's power came to reside in us, in us. Hello? His power goes into us, <laughs> into, hallelujah, into us. That, that, that is powerful. God's power is in us. Immeasurable power, right? That's God's immeasurable power. You can't measure God's power, can you? No one can measure God's power. God's power goes into us at salvation. You can't measure it. If you hook up anything, you know how you can measure electricity? They can stick things in the wall and say, you got this many kilowatts coming out of there. and You can't measure the power of God, can you? Come on. The power of God is in us. We're filled up with God's power. Well, that's very important to know, isn't it? That'll make you an overcomer, just meditating on that right there. God's power is in me. The same power that raised Jesus from the dead is in me. Hello? Come on. Ha, ha, ha. His power is in us, believers. In, in. <laughs> In. Amen? That's hardly even talked about, is it? It's hardly even talked about in churches. God's power is in you. Well, we need to understand what kind of power is in us. God's power. God's power in us. In. Not just coming towards us. As, as it says in your ESV, his power 
toward us who believe. No, it comes in. 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 Come on. We got to know that, right? We got to realize what's on the inside of us. We got to realize what's been done on on the inside because then we're going to be an overcomer when we know what's in us. The power of God. You, you, You can't compete with the power of God. What power can compete with the power of God? None. So we win. Come on. You can't compete with the power of God. No nuclear power, no solar power, no, no, no. What other powers are? Electric power, nuclear, thermal. That's nothing. Wind power, that's nothing compared to the power of God. Come on. That comes to live on the inside, in us abides in us. Don't you just, man, you just, I feel like someone's want to take a lap right now. His power comes in, in. Ooh, man, I, I want to preach this down south. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> His power gets in us. What salvation, right? When we're sozoed. When we're, huh? When we're soteriad. No, that's not, that's not good. That's incorrect grammar. Soteria is the noun, so it wouldn't work. We're sozoed, we're saved, right? The power of God comes on the inside. And, and if, you, if you don't know, Paul's prayer right there, Paul's prayer, what is he? He's praying this prayer for them to understand that. His prayer, and that's why we have those prayers back there at the Info Center, we, we put his Paul's prayers and then we make them personal, right? Then you would pray that for yourself, that I would, that I would understand his power in me, yeah. that I would see it, that I would understand it. Why? So I can be an overcomer because I realize I have revelation of the God's power in me. And that is not just coming towards me. Come on. It's in me. Yeah. And so Paul prayed all his prayers uh, that, you know, we talk about them all the time, but they're back there if you want to uh, use them. But he prayed those prayers so they would understand it. They would understand the power of God is in them, right? Uh, 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 you want to grab me that uh, sheet back there? I thought I might just hit on that for a few minutes, you know, you know, just for a few minutes, you know. The prayers of Paul. <laughs> She's going on. Oh, wait. You, yeah, I would say you're going backwards, right? You're going backwards. Well, like Ephesians 1 here, he says, I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling, what are the riches of the glory, of his glory, riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints, in, in, means there's an inheritance put inside of us when we're saved, come on, and what is the exceeding greatness of your power, here it says toward, I think this is New King James, his power in us who believe, according to the working of your mighty power, which you worked in Christ when you raised him from the dead and seated him at your right hand in the heavenly places, right? So all, all these prayers in Ephesians 3, that he would grant you according to the riches of your glory to be strengthened with might through your spirit in, my, in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your heart through faith. Be able to comprehend with all the saints with the width, length, depth, and height of his love, to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge, right? He prays these prayers, Why? Because, in fact, most, you know, our prayers, to, our prayers, a lot of times our prayers aren't, aren't very biblical, right? Because yeah. <laughs> Paul's prayers were almost all centered on, I, I need, God needs you to see this. So I'm praying that you see it on the inside, right? Not with, the, not with your physical eyes, with, that you see it on the inside. Because if you don't get revelation of what's been done for you, you won't walk in it. 
And so he makes these prayers so that they will see what's being done, what's been done, been done, past tense, on the inside of them. Because if we don't really know what we have in salvation, right, if we don't really understand it, we're not going to walk in it. And then it's just religion, right? It's just religion. But if we're walking in it, if we see who we are in Christ, if we see what has been done in us and the inheritance in us and the power in us, come on, and we get revelation of that, then we can walk in it and we can accomplish what God wants us to accomplish. But if we don't see it, right, that's why Paul prayed these. He wants them to see it. Hallelujah. We got to see it. I was looking at these other ones down here. Huh? The Philippians one? Oh, that's a good one too. This I pray your love may abound still more and more. Knowledge and all discernment. Okay. More knowledge, more understanding. That you may approve the things that are excellent. That you may be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ, being filled with the fruits of righteousness, which are by Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. He wants them to be fruitful. Amen. <laughs> fruitful people. Come on. Fruitful, sincere, and without offense till the day of Christ. Hallelujah. I want to be in that camp. You want to be in that camp? Yeah. Sincere and without offense till you see Jesus. You're not offended and you're still sincere in your faith. You're not faking it at all. You're just living for Jesus. You don't have to put on an act. You don't have to be a hypocrite. You're just living for Jesus all the way to the end. Woo, glory. That's what I believe Paul did. He said, I've run the race. I finished, I finished my course. I've run my race. I've kept the faith. Come on, he went right to the end. Totally sincere about preaching Jesus. Woo, hallelujah. So if you don't have this, I would suggest getting it. And praying those prayers for yourself and for others. Amen. All right. We had fun on that one, didn't we? You want one more? All right. Watch out. Here we go. Woo. First Corinthians. You like the Corinthians? Oh, I love One nine. The book of Corinthians was written to Corinth. <laughs> the church at Corinth by Paul, Paul it says right there, first letter of Paul. the apostle Paul. The apostle Paul used to be Saul. Used to be, excuse me. Used to be Saul. Saul then became Paul. Became Paul. Simon, Barjona. He's a rock. Yeah, everybody gets a new name. You're getting a new name. You get a new name too. Yeah. Right. Jesus is going to tell you. It says in the book of Revelation. He's going to give us all a new name. That he wants you to have forever. You're going to find out. You're going to find out one day when Jesus gives you your new name. And you'll have it forever. What well, we were supposed to be named, right? Because God has a name for us. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, right. It'd be great if, if we get up there and he says, yep, you're Judah. Yep, you're Judah. Sarah, you are still Sarah. Yep, Jesus like, yep, you're still Sarah. Paige, you're still Paige. <laughs> Not Scribble. <laughs> scribble. Wow, that's like naming your kid apple and pear. You know, nowadays they do that. Peach and... <laughs> that would have been something. That would have been something right there. Page and scribble. That would have been wonderful. Because we scribble on the page, right? <laughs> I don't I don't know what's happening right now. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna go back to the scripture because this First Corinthians one nine. God is faithful. 
by whom you were called into the fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. My point from here is God will be faithful to you. <laughs> you look so shocked. <laughs> God will be faithful to us forever when we are saved. God is faithful to those who are called into fellowship. Come on. No, faithful. God is faithful. It's close. It's close. You can't just say faith, though. God is faithful to the saved. You could say it that way. Faithful. God is faithful. I just put God is faithful. I mean, to make it shorter, you can say God is faithful. No, I won't give you the point for that. No, it's got to be God is faithful. God is faithful. No. No, because God is faithful. See, when, what happens when you're saved? God is faithful to you forever. In other words, it's like getting, like, you know, getting married in the natural sense. We're supposed to be faithful to our partner throughout our earthly life, right? Well, God said, I'm going to be faithful to you forever. Right. You may have experienced some unfaithful people. You know, maybe a friend. Maybe a friend was unfaithful. Maybe a parent. Wow. Wow. <laughs> but, but, but now, whatever unfaithful people have been in your life, you have God. You have God. The most faithful one. You have God looking out for you, right? You can be assured he will take care of you. You can be assured he will rescue you. Come on. You can be convinced that God will not be unfaithful to us, his children. Right? He's not going to be unfaithful to us. He never, 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 never will he be unfaithful. Right? Why? It's not in his nature to be unfaithful. It's not in his nature. We see, we see human unfaithfulness all the time. But God, it's not in his nature. God will not be unfaithful. Now, you, 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 and part of this is you have to believe that. Right? You have to believe that. You can't doubt that. Don't doubt. Amen? Don't doubt that. Doubt, doubt steals the blessing. Doubt will steal the blessing. If you don't believe he'll be faithful to you, it's going to steal the blessing. That's just like anything we've been talking about. Well, you got to believe. You got to have faith. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's not a new point. But you got to have faith in what we're saying. Don't, don't, come on. You, gotta, you actually got to believe it. You got to believe you're forgiven. You got to believe that you're in Christ. No, but I'm making the point that in this, because you'll, you'll hear preachers say, well, it's just all going to work out for you. No, you got to believe something. You got to believe something. So if you don't believe he's going to be faithful, we got a problem, right? Because you don't want to doubt him. If you believe something, you say something. Paul said, we believe, therefore we speak. And speaking of speaking, <laughs> remember on Sunday, I was talking about Job. Who remembers Job? I was talking about Job. Ah. Job had a serious problem, right? He lost everything he had. And what did he do? He did not say what he should have said when he was going through the problem what did he say? Why, God, why? I should have died when I was a baby. I shouldn't have been born. Why, why? Well, he should have said, what a faithful God you are. Come on. Remember we talked about worshiping God in the midst of the problem, in the midst of the trial. What Job should have done, he had already said, that which I greatly feared has come upon me. We knew he wasn't operating in faith. He was operating in fear, which brought the whole disaster into his life. He allowed access into his life. God poured out, you can say, uh, uh, people say God gave access to Job. Yeah, he gave access to Job because 
he was just to do it because Job was not acting in faith. And so God is always just to pour out judgment. He's always just to do it. He has the right to pour out judgment right now on anybody. He has the right to do it because he's always just. The only reason we're not destroyed right now is because of the grace of God and because we're saved and the blood of Jesus. So when God's wrath is poured out, when his judgment is poured out, and as we know, the book of Revelation tells it very clearly what's going to happen, right? All of those who are not in Christ, it's going to be bad. It's going to be bad, right? It's going to be a lot worse than Job. Job recovered. They say it was probably about a year. He lost everything. He repented. Hallelujah. And he got twice as much as he ever had. Twice as much. But he did the right thing. He repented, right? But instead of, instead of complaining, instead of doing what he should not have done, if something has access into our life and we see something show up, if, if we've given access, right? We talked about for eight, nine weeks, no vacancy. How do we give access to the enemy? We can give access to the enemy. Well, Job gave access to the enemy through his words and through his doubt and through his unbelief. Come on. And so we can't doubt that God is faithful. We can't doubt that his faithfulness. So Job, even if he had loud access, the first thing he should have done, right? We can do, we're learning from Job, right? We're learning. And that's good. And the first thing Job should have done is said, if, you know, say it happened, right? He, he had the, uh, he lost the house, lost the family, the kids, everything. He lost it all. The livestock, everything was all gone. He, the first thing he should have done is, uh, God, I worship you. You are a faithful God. And I'm going to trust in you. I will always trust in you, Father. He should have done that, right? Instead of going to a rant and a rage for chapters. Of course, it's written down for us. But what I'm saying is we can't doubt that God is going to be faithful. Because as soon as we start doubting God's faithfulness, we've stepped out of faith into doubt. We've stepped on the devil's side. Now, we're, now there's access. So we can't... We can't get on that side. We don't, we don't never want to go on that side. Right? We never want to go on that side. You never, ever want to say, well, I don't know if God's going to come through for me. No. No, God will come through for me. Because God is faithful to me. I'm his child, and he will be faithful to me. He is not an unfaithful God. He is a faithful God, so I know he's coming through for me. Right? And you're saying what you believe. Come on. You don't want to get your words lined up with the devil. You don't want to get your words lined up with doubt and unbelief. No, no, we look to God. We always look to God. We always know he's faithful. We always know he's going to come through for us. So we say what we believe. Our father will come through. My father will come through for me. He will come through for me every single time, right? We never say, oh, I don't know this time. I don't know about this time. No, no, we don't even go there, right? Why? Because we believe that God is faithful to me, right? Not just, uh, not just to Pastor Vern, right? You got to believe it for yourself. God is faithful to Griffin. Now you got to believe that yourself, right? You can't, you can't go on my faith. You got to go on your faith, right? God is faithful to me. Ooh. See, when you stand there with real belief, you're on the right spot. Real faith, right? Real faith in God, real faith. Come on. Uh, we talked about a few weeks ago. Abraham was the real deal. He was the real deal. He said, whatever you say, God, that's what I'm going to do. And he did it, right? He was the real deal. When the rich young ruler came to Jesus and he said, what must I do to inherit salvation? And Jesus said, you need to do this, that, and this. And he said, I've done that since I was born. I'm, I'm a good dude. I am, I am so good. And then Jesus said, sell all you have and give it to the poor. He said, oh, can't do that. No, 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 can't do that. Well, he was a liar. He was just a talker, right? 
he had no real faith. Because if he had real faith, he would have, he's, when he asked Jesus what he wanted him to do, he would have had real faith in what Jesus said and he would have done it. But he didn't have real faith. He had fake faith. No, real faith, come on, real faith will come through and it will win because it actually believes what God said and God said, I'm faithful. And so real faith stands knowing, woo, real faith stands knowing God is faithful to me. And Job should have done that. Now we can't get on Job too much. He didn't have the word of God like we do. But we have the word of God, right? You got it sitting on your lap. You got apps. You got Bibles in your house. You got apps all over your phone. So you got to know what God said. Amen. Amen. You, You got no excuse to not know what God said and not believe what God said. Come on. God will not fail those who look to him for help. He won't fail them because he is faithful. He won't fail, right? God's not going to fail you as long as you keep looking to him, as long as you keep trusting in him, as long as your faith is in him. Come on. You, you don't have fake faith. You don't have uh, that, the, the, the un, what is it? unfeigned. That's one word in the King James. You don't, you don't want the fake faith. You want the real faith. And if you have real faith... Come on, God's going to come through because you're trusting in him completely. And that's very important. Amen? Yeah. That's very important. And that's not talked, enough, uh, talked about enough. Uh, uh, like I said, a lot of times you hear preachers, well, God's just going to come through. But they don't tell you, they don't tell you, you need to believe that he's going to come through. You need to stand with faith in his word that he is faithful. You need to speak what you believe in your heart. You need to stand on it and stand on it no matter what. You stand on what God said and no matter what storm comes around you, you you, you never let it knock you over. You never let it take you down because you are standing on God's word. So your faith stands strong on what God said no matter what. Come on. You got to have real faith. Ooh, and know that he will always come through. I'm saying a lot of things, but (laughs) but I'm saying when we say Jesus is Lord, has anybody done that in here? No, good, good. All right, most of you have. (laughs) When we say Jesus is Lord. First, what happens first? We're sozoed. We're sozoed. And we've been talking about many things that happen, right? When we say Jesus is Lord. But one thing that we're ending tonight with is God becomes faithful to us forever. Forever. When we say Jesus is Lord. Really, we come into covenant with God right then. We come into the new covenant. I don't know if we're going to cover that down the road, but we come into the new covenant. Come on, when we say Jesus is Lord and we come into covenant with the most faithful one that ever has been. Ooh, glory. And he'll be faithful even when we're not faithful. He'll stay faithful. Ooh, glory. Because he can't break his nature. He can't lie. He can't go against who he is. Hallelujah. So we have the faithful God on our side. We have the most faithful one that's going to watch over us and keep us. But we have to believe that he is faithful. Thank you, Father. We believe, Father, that you are faithful. You are a faithful God. You always come through for your people as we trust in you. As we put our faith in you, as we look to you, you come through. You've never failed anybody who's looked to you with faith. You've never failed them. And you're not going to fail us either. We trust you completely, Father. We put all of our trust in you our faithful God, we are thankful people that you 
are a faithful God. Thank you, Father. We give you praise tonight, our great God. We thank you for this time together. In Jesus' mighty name, we give you all the glory, all the honor, all the praise. And the church said, Amen. Amen.